I love tractors. I work with them, I even race them, and of course I mow my lawn using one of them. But maybe it's time for this poor tow tractor to go to tractor's heaven. Cause I received something pretty interesting in the mail. And maybe you're in the same situation as me, but we all have very busy lives now. And having someone else, or in this case a machine, doing a chore for you is a big game changer. <laughs> and I quickly realized that point the day we got Boris. Uh, is it just me or it's impossible to pronounce the name Boris without doing the accent? Boris. Simply impossible. Anyway, if you don't already own one of those little bugger, I highly recommend getting you one. But always double check in case your dog dropped some uh, magical nuggets. Cause one day the wife got blessed with a surprise. Ugh. So this is just a little side by side comparison to give you an idea of the mower size. Come on. Ah. Right, back to Boris number two. Yeah, still can't. By the way, how should I call this one? Let me know down below. So this mower is made by Mamotion and it's the Luba 2, all-wheel drive. This is the F1, la crème de la crème, of the autonomous mowers. It's got a ton of cool features that I'll get in more details later, but it's an all-wheel drive, so it's literally a mini monster truck. And it's got two sets of blades, which sets this machine really apart from the rest of the group. In a way, it's really the sharpest tool in the shed. Okay, that's all pretty good, but what I want to know is the technology of autonomous mowers has reached a point in terms of cut quality and reliability that I can now finally retire my poor Toro tractor. And to answer that question, I'll put the mower through a series of tests. <laughs> hey! But first, we need to set it up. After a bit of assembly and installing the RTK reference station, which is kind of a ground reference point for the mower, but the Luba is also using four different localization protocols with satellites, and the RTK is also exchanging data with the satellites, so everyone is pushing and pulling data to each other. It's kind of hard to understand who's driving who, because let's face it, we've all seen orgies more organized than this, but at least it works. Moving on. After a bit of fiddling with the Mamotion app and a few updates later, the mower was ready to be played with. Well, I ain't gonna lie, that took me a few tries to understand and solve some issues I had. But, and I have to give credit to Mamotion, everything was well documented and there was a bunch of videos online on how to fix specific issues. So I armed myself with patience and got through this quite easily. Ish. After that, we need to set the perimeter of specific areas by driving on the edge with the mower and the device will record the outline and transform it into an area. Then you can remove sections from this area that you don't want the mower to go to. Like for instance, my garden. You can also set up paths between areas so the mower will use them during transfer. And of course, you can adjust a trillion of things in the settings, like cutting height, speed and patterns, and so on. But one funny setting, and probably an unusual one in the autonomous mower world, is the option of mowing shapes, or words, that I need to try. Alright, first test, right off the bat, let's see how the mower will perform against a virgin, unmowed patch that I left untouched for many months especially for the Luba. In average, the grass and all other sorts of growing green things living there are about four and a half inch long. Can't wait to see how the tiny razor blades will perform against that. Huh. Well, not bad. I was hoping for a bit more drama, like clogging or something, but nah, it did fine. Except that even though I put the blades at their lowest position, the grass is yeah, way too long for my liking, and it's partially my fault. You see, my motion offers two models of Luba, the standard one and the race version. Unfortunately, I went with the race version, thinking that my lawn was a pretty rough terrain, but apparently it's not. Maybe I can do something about it. After all, it wouldn't be a Vinny's video without a bit of fab.
So I'll use this montage as an opportunity to remind you the almighty trifecta of all YouTubers. Me, myself and Irene. I mean sub, like and comment. So if you like this content, don't forget to me to this channel or click on that myself button or leave an Irene down below. Thank you. Oh, this is not the same machine. By only adding a 20mm spacer, that improved by a mile the cut height and finish. Yeah, that's more like I like my lawn to be cut. So choose well when selecting your Luba. I put links to my motion website down below. First thought on this option is that you need a pretty big lawn to be able to write something down. So I choose the word cock because it's a short three letters word, which means rooster in French. And it's also the French emblem, so that's kind of a little shout out to our cousins who hosted the last Summer Olympic Games. Unfortunately, because of the mower size, the app only let me put a pretty huge cock on my lawn. And the result is... Uh, okay, I guess. As I mentioned, this machine is all-wheel drive, a pretty rare feature in the robot mowers world. So I've got some pretty steep sections around my lawn, but I think we should start with a moderate one. Okay, that was easy, except that the blades might be a bit too low for the top edge, and the right side blade stop when it transforms itself into a mini excavator. I reset the mower and the fold went away, and we were back in business. This section is so steep that I always use the edge trimmer to cut the grass, but cameras never do justice to show how steep things really are. So to give you a number, this is about 28 degrees. Next line is as easy apparently as the first one. And this one is about 23 degrees. Hmm, that's the steepest bit I have. Maybe I could try one side of the front ditch. Okay, a little drift in action here, but not even a problem. Side note though, I'm in manual mode and I'm pretty sure that auto mode is a no-go for such a steep hill, cause as you can see, going down forward was not that easy. And this bit is about 36 degrees, but I'm convinced the mower could climb even steeper hills in manual mode. I just don't have a more inclined section of land to test it on. The Luba 2 is equipped with a shit ton of sensors to navigate around things you might have left on your property. Although the app will alarm you to clean up your lawn before mowing, I want to test how good and sensitive are those sensors using this. This stuffed eggplant is fairly small and light. I'm curious to see the outcome. Maybe I should have the mower closer. Mr. Eggplant will be joined by Buckley that I found in my daughter's room. Shh, don't tell my daughter. That's our little secret, okay? What? Wow. Good job, mower. Good freaking job. I'm impressed. Just to be sure it wasn't a fluke, I did it again. And again. I mean, I was sincerely Bravo. impressed, but don't throw things in front of it at the last minute, because it won't budge. This is a nice piece of equipment with a considering price tag. So what are the anti thief's options? According to Mamotion, an alarm will be triggered if you lift it up. The robot front will lift, working on hold. Okay, uh, that's not really convincing. Also, user can track location with the GPS or 4G, but from what I understand, GPS tracking will only work if you are in the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth range. And for the 4G, well, you need a SIM card and a data plan. And lastly, of course, you could add an hair tag. 
Also, I've seen people putting warning stickers on their lubas. That may dissuade low-level thieves, but... Uh, no, that's no warnings. This is Hamilton's livery. Because, okay, yeah, I agree that the mower looks like an F1, but I think it looks way more like a Star Destroyer from Star Wars. Good luck on seeing this. Anyway. Robot mowers are new toys, and they draw a lot of attention. To prevent someone from stealing your mower, the Luba should blend in with the landscape. Then why is it painted in a flashy metallic white? That thing looks just like a giant moving pimple on a Martian's forehead. For safety, I have this guy as my personal watchdog. And don't be fooled by his high beagle cuteness level, cause he identifies himself as a Dubberman. So I should be safe with this dog. Uh, speaking of which... Okay, I'll admit it, it's a pretty dumb test. But what if I could find other chores that the robot could perform for me? Like walking my dog. Plus it's like having your own safety device always with your mower. Like this guy. Who I think uh, might went overboard. The problem here, as we demonstrated earlier, is the mower sensor sensitivity. And having a dog passing in front of them from time to time was making the mower going crazy with its route. To mitigate the problem, I switched for a longer leash. It kind of worked uh, for a small while. Hey! <laughs> Then the neighbor showed up with his dog, which complicated things. And soon enough, Enzo let me know that he got tired of being my guinea pig. And don't worry guys, no mower or dog have been harmed during this test. Cause prior to the filming, I removed the blades. I just forgot to put them back on the next day I used the mower. Overall, walking the dog with the robot was a fail. Because let's face it, the tractor has always been better at it. The Mamotion Luba 2 is a hell of a machine. No, no, it's a crise de belle patente pour vrai. Là. Yes, the app is a bit buggy from time to time. Yes, I wish we could mechanically adjust the mower's height from a standard to a raised version, instead of having two different models. And I don't get why it's a flashy metallic white, but once you push that start button, the mower flawlessly do its thing like it's nobody's business. Because at the end of the day, what really matters is the quality and efficiency of a job well done. And it that matter. I can assure you guys that the Luba 2 has reached a superior level than my lawn tractor. Alright, I'm gonna be. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.